Israel's battlefield going high-tech with some robotic warriors. Welcome to this News Hub Extra. I'm Simon Constable, and let's straight away go to Charles Levinson, who's standing by in Jerusalem with this very interesting story. Ch Charles, tell us about these robotic warriors. Well, Israel has been, is among the world leaders in developing uh, robotic, unmanned combat systems. That includes unmanned uh, boats that, that patrol the seas, unmanned ground vehicles, and unmanned aerial vehicles. And they're, they're part of this growing, sort of this growing movement into robotics and in, in, in battle that we're seeing really around the world, but that Israel is, is sort of playing a pioneering role in to some degree. Now, now, I've heard of the aerial vehicles, and they're sometimes called drones by, by some people. I haven't heard of the land ones. One, one of them, you say, is called the Guardian. Uh, explain that, please. Well, Israel deployed the Guardian, this unmanned ground vehicle, about 10 months ago. Uh, along its borders with the Gaza Strip in the south and with Lebanon in the north. Um, and, and the Guardian's a good example of how, how Israel has, you know, really for the past 20, 30 years since it, since it pioneered the, uh, the unmanned aerial vehicle, how Israel has responded to sort of very real battlefield threats with unmanned robotic solutions. So in 2006, you had Israeli soldiers kidnapped both along the Gaza border and along the Lebanese border. And now, a couple of years later, this year, last year, we have the Guardian deployed, which is basically an armored, muscled up golf cart that, that, that drives itself really very autonomously uh, along the border, patrolling for any signs of infiltrators or threats. So, so this the, clearly the, the 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 goal in this case is that it does the, there are less soldiers put at risk on the battlefield, and that's good for the deploying army. What's the longer term goal? I mean, are there going to be many, many more of these? Uh, there's no question that, that that modern armies, the Israeli, the American, and others, are all moving increasingly into unmanned systems. Um, you know, in Israel, so I've heard an estimate that as many as one third of, of Israel's uh, combat vehicles will be unmanned within the next decade or two. Um, and, and again, you know, the U.S. is, a, is, a, is, is similar. The U.S. went into Iraq uh, in 2003 with just a handful of unmanned aerial vehicles. Today, I think it has close to 20,000 uh, unmanned aerial vehicles and ground vehicles, uh, you know, as part of its arsenal. Um, that 2009 was the first year that the U.S. trained more pilots for unmanned vehicles or unmanned aerial vehicles than it did train than it did train for for manned fighters and bombers. So that's a pretty uh, powerful sign, I think, of, of the direction we're headed. Now, now, I understand that the air, sea, and land vehicles can sort of work together and they can talk to each other. Can you explain that, please? Well, so so you could have a pilot sitting in 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 Tel Aviv or in Oklahoma and Nevada. Uh, piloting an unmanned aerial vehicle or in, in, in the, increasingly in the future they don't even need to be piloting it these things can fly themselves and flying over terrain down below you'll have an unmanned ground vehicle on the ground operating and these the unmanned aerial vehicle will be you know picking up threats spotting threats picking you know point pinpointing coordinates and the unmanned ground vehicles will be automatically following the directions from the unmanned plane to, 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 to zero in an attack or do whatever it needs to do, uh, you know, on the ground. Now, now, for any army that deploys such such vehicles like this, the vehicles that can actually make decisions about when to shoot and when to when to attack, that presents some ethical issues. Can you can you talk a little bit about that? Well, of course, the technology is already at a point where these unmanned vehicles, ground or air, can make decisions about you know, can, can detect threats on their own and can be, be programmed to fire without any human involvement. Now, all the designers and the armies itself that are involved say that there's always going to be human in the loop. But these robots are definitely capable of saying that person has a hot, you know, can pick up a person on the ground carrying an AK-47, determine that that AK-47's barrel is warm, therefore it's just been fired, know it's in the vicinity of where an attack just took place on U.S. troops, and automatically fire on U.S. or Israeli troops, whatever the case may be, and, and automatically fire at the threat without any human being being involved. Now, obviously, that presents ethical dilemmas because if a robot kills an innocent civilian, you know, do you blame the software programmer who, who wrote the software? Do you blame the, the officer who, who deployed it? You know, how, where does this fit into the laws of war? 
Yeah, it's a, it's an interesting question and a big one. And, and I guess if we if we take in the realms of science fiction, you know, maybe these robots actually eventually turn on their masters and shoot them over. See, I, I hope not. But anyway, thank you very much. That's Charles Levinson with the Wall Street Journal in Jerusalem. And I'm Simon Constable here in New York. And that's the News Hub for now. We'll be back later with more breaking news.